what's up everybody i'm mitch brown with the kaleidoscope group senior consultant checking in from brooklyn new york by way of nashville tennessee always got to mention that from nashville tennessee so today uh thank you for being here i want to have a conversation with you about embracing difference that's right embracing difference so first things first listen i'm going to acknowledge that 2020 has been a unique and a very very challenging year COVID-19 has been responsible for a loss of life uh, and many people loss of income. Uh, really just a true disruption to our normal way of life and, and normality as we know it. Uh, also a very tense political season and uh, racial uh, uh, injustice and, and unrest. Listen, this year has been challenging to say the least. Now, when that happens, listen, a lot of times difference in the way we know it, it gets amplified as means of like divisiveness and it gets amplified in terms of, you know, uh, uh, us versus them, uh, very polarizing kind of cultures and, and environments. So now more than ever, I think it, it's timely to have a conversation about this idea of difference and how we need to embrace it and its correlation to in creating inclusive culture, inclusive organizations, inclusive teams, and ultimately uh, inclusive individuals. So. Uh, when we talk embracing difference, uh, first and foremost, I, I want to let you know that there's a continuum that I'm going to lead us through here today. And there's four steps on this continuum. Uh, the first step is what we call sameness. The second step is what we call toleration. The third step is accepting. And the fourth step is what we call embracing, right? Where we actually want to be. That's the aspirational state. Now, before we get into explaining the model, the first thing I want to do is, uh, you know, have you think about this. Do we treat all differences the same, right? Meaning that all differences created equal? No, nah, not necessarily, right? There are some differences that you don't mind embracing and some that you probably mind a little bit more than others. Now, before we get into the explanation, uh, one more stop I want to make is uh, along your memory, right? I want you to go back and find a, a moment in time, if you will. So hop into the time machine or that DeLorean from back to the future. Uh, let's go way back, way back in time, as Blackstreet would say. Um, and go back to middle school, elementary school, whatever you want. And I want you to go to a specific place. I want you to go back to the schoolyard. And there, I want you to answer this one question, right? Close your eyes. And as you imagine that place, I want you to think about, well, who was it that got picked on more than others? Give it some thought. A couple answers probably coming to mind. Most notably, you're probably saying to yourself, the person who was different. The kids that were most different from everybody else. Kids could be cruel. They could see difference and tease people because of difference. And when we get older, the hope is that people grow out of that, right? That's the hope. Uh, but I do think that there's something that we as humans subconsciously, we hold on to somewhere in the back of our psyche that difference means less than that difference means problem. And that's something we have to address uh, because, you know, it's not really about somebody being malicious about it, right? Uh, because if you've been in any of our workshops at the Kaleidoscope Group, uh, we have a philosophy that we sit a lot of our teachings and intellectual property on that we believe in the goodness of folks, the goodness of people. So a lot of times people are expressing, you know, this difference is less than, our difference is problematic and subtle in unconscious ways. This is why it's very much important to assess, acknowledge and embrace difference in a way that's different uh, from how we might not do if we're unintentional about it. Inclusion is very much the work of the intentional, okay? So again, let's go back to our continuum, right? Sameness, toleration, accepting, embracing. Now, what does it mean to be in sameness? Well, let me start by giving you an analogy or an example, if you will, right? And, you know, for me, uh, again, not all differences are created equal. So one of the differences that I don't embrace as much when it comes to, uh, you know, music or my radio, for example, right? So sameness is all about people showing up and wanting people to be just like them. Uh, they're, they're very uh, in denial about the differences that may exist. They feel like their way is the best way. Uh, kind of my way of the highway type thinking, if you will. And if you ride with me and we're going on a road trip, odds are I'm going to be playing uh, sports talk radio, uh, hip hop and R&B, NPR, maybe, right? If it's not one of those three things, I don't want to hear it. 
So when it comes to that, I don't really embrace difference. This is what I like. I know what I like. And that's where I am. I'm really in that place of sameness. Now, that next place is toleration, right? Or, or tolerating difference. You're willing to deal with difference uh, just in the moment. Okay. Just in the moment. And you're doing it long enough to say, you know what? We'll do this now, but just you wait. You'll be seeing the world just like me. So maybe there's somebody I took an interest in, you know, maybe you are uh, meeting somebody for the first time and you're dating and they're in the car and they want to listen to something. So, you know what? I'll tolerate it. I'll listen because I want to build rapport on this relationship. But when I build rapport, listen, I'm going to move you over to how I'll see the world. You're just going to be listening to hip hop and R&B, sports talk radio and NPR. And never the more uh, should you should you say anything else. So toleration is all about in the moment. Right. I'm willing to do this right now for a finite amount of time until I can get you to see the world just like me. Now, those first two places, again, don't have to be intentional about being there, but oftentimes uh, our behavior uh, demonstrates such, right? Uh, so we want to move along that continuum. That ni- next stop is what we call accepting. What is accepting all about? Well, accepting is about the idea that the difference as it's represented does something in my interest that I'm willing to accept the difference because of, you know, whatever I'm getting for me. And give, let me give you the, ex- the example of, you know, in following along the trajectory of uh, the car radio. Now, maybe we're going on a long road trip and, uh, you know, I got one of my buddies here uh, at the Kaleidoscope Group, Reggie. Uh, and Reggie says, all right, Mitch, I'll help you drive this uh, long road trip. Uh, and you know what? Uh, because I'm going the same way and listen, I, I'm, I, I needed to go. I'm willing to put the whole bill for the gas. So I say, all right, I can deal with that. But once Reggie gets into my car, he just wants to listen to Motown. He just wants to listen to old school hits, which I don't mind, by the way. Uh, But it doesn't fit my narrative, right? So I might say to myself, listen, I'm willing to accept this difference. And probably in a a finite amount of time, right, just for this road trip, in the interest of, you know what, I'm not going to have to pay for this gas. So accepting is really a place where you're not really embracing Again, you're just dealing with the difference uh, in the interest of something else that's coming advantageous to you. Now, a lot of times in organizations and teams, uh, people categorize uh, or miscategorize embracing difference as maybe one of those two things in the middle, toleration or accepting. And, you know, they may say something like, hey, you know, uh, I have, you know, one of these on my team. Right. Or I have done, you know, uh, you know, this for this person. Right. It sometimes comes off uh, where they think it's coming off as embracing. But it's really once you dig down into it, it'd be critical of the actual behavior that's being articulated. It's in that place, usually of either toleration or accepting. Embracing is what we want. Uh, It is the acknowledgement that, you know what, there's value in difference. Uh, there's value in having Reggie in that car ride, right? Because uh, there's wisdom in Reggie, which it really is. Uh, there is value in indifference. And once we understand that, we break that formula that difference is less than, that difference is problematic. And then we begin to turn uh, our own objectives because now we are seeking out difference and we're proactively uh, wanting to have difference on our teams. Uh, so now, you know, when I have somebody ride with me. I'm seeking out. What are you listening to? What do you want to listen to? Right. Uh, What are the things that uh, you typically do when you're, you know, on a road trip or a long trip like this? And why is that important? And it's not necessarily important because of, you know, listen, I'm not saying that you have to change your conviction or your passion because I'm not. I'm always going to like hip hop and R&B. I'm always going to like sports talk radio and NPR. But what I am saying, though, is if you're closed off to difference, your ability to demonstrate inclusion goes with it. It gets closed off. Uh, And, you know, that's not where we want to be. You don't want to be in what we call a monolithic cultural uh, orientation, where you just see the world as you see it. You're in denial about difference and how other people experience it. You, when you do acknowledge difference, you create a me versus them or us versus them mentality about the difference. 
No, we want to be in that intercultural orientation, okay? We want to be in the intercultural orientation where we acknowledge it, we want it to make us better, uh, we want it to, to capitalize on it. Because why? I mean, look out in the world, right? Uh, the world is a very, very diverse place. Uh, the world is a very, very diverse market, even domestically or globally. So when you talk about, you know, 2020 and 2021, uh, you want to be able to grow into the future and understand that, you know, being able to embrace difference is not something that just sounds good for the sake of doing it, uh, but it is a business imperative. It is a business necessity uh, for operational effectiveness. And those who are going to be doing it and doing it well, uh, you know, you're going to be uh, well positioned for the future, if you will. So listen. I would love to continue this conversation with you, your organization, your teams. Please check us out at kgdiversity.com. Please give us a call, send us an email. Again, I'm Mitch Brown, checking in from Brooklyn, New York by way of Nashville, Tennessee. It was a pleasure to come tell you and advocate for embracing difference. Uh, let's go deeper. Hit us up.